Hello everyone, this is Caillou, and welcome back to coverage of Grand Prix Paris for the MSCM format. Today we're going to be watching the round 2 match between El Makino, who's essentially playing a, a hate, green-white hate bearsy deck, which has a lot of 2-drops, ways to tutor them, but is mainly centered around this card, Fog Spewer, from our newest set, uh, Monsters of Chikyu. It's a coughing, as you can see, but it's also secretly a Talia in disguise. Um, and in a kind of unfortunate matchup, is going to be facing up against uh, that damn pipsqueak on Sultai Heart Attack Control, which is a deck which uses um, Mastery of the Veil plus the titular Heart of Zadina as a powerful control finisher. So Fog Spear's Talia mode prevented Pip from uh, pit bolting it on two, and right now El Makino with some ridiculous top decks going to be able to time stream Sentinel into another time stream Sentinel. Um, which is really annoying because I believe that Pip um, was probably saving, uh, was didn't Pitwelt the Fog Spear yet in order to save a Violent Collapse. Could Cursory Glance the Time Stream Sentinel? Or actually, no. Actually, the probably the better play is uh, Pay 3, Pitwelt the existing Time Stream Sentinel. Um, oh no, it's going to Cursory Glance that one. The reason I think that this would this is the worse than Pitwelting is you still take... Um, you still take a four instead of two, and then next turn you get to untap and violent collapse anyways. So, I guess the idea is that like you would want pit build in case El Makino then plays another land, or sorry, another creature, because you now have to tap out. So actually, yeah, that makes sense. You do have Whispered's Exploration as good uh, insurance though. Oof, and no third land for El Makino makes these this triple theocracy in hand feel bad. But he's going to get out the second Fog Spewer. Um, I think at this point, Pip just... You just... Oh no, tapping for... Okay, he's going to recall. I guess the thing is, uh, you get to ramp out past the uh, Fog Spewer. Also has Exit to be able to kill it. So that was a really good uh, recall for God and Aeon's draw. So Pip's just going to, in response, just Exit to the Fog Spewer. Main 2, the literal only thing El Makino can play is a Seeker of Untouched Beauty. Because once still has not drawn a third land, it has four three drops in hand. And this game is looking very over. Epic Encounter co coming through. Probably going to be finding a Heart of Zadina. Yeah. And yep, here comes a Heart of Zadina. So next turn, uh, Pip is going to have access to, Jesus, a whopping uh, 10 mana. <clears throat> and it looks like, oh wow, Pip is going to coalesce recall. Has enough mana to coalesce for recall Forgotten Aeons after all that? Yeah, actually it does. It's, um, no, he just pit. Did Pip have enough mana? Paid two, and then has one, two, three, four. Yeah, okay, had five, so it would be able to pay one for the off color. Um, and then next turn, probably you can just mastery of the veil for uh, sixteen. And yeah, Elm t top decking the third land there, but at that point is way too far behind. Had a really good start, but then Pip had a good sequencing of answers, and Elm had. Elm just got Game of Magic. That like just the land system is just an, a really unfortunate consequence of that's baked into the Game of Magic, and sometimes that just happens. So let me look at uh, sideboards before we move into Game Two. Okay, for El Makino, do you have Worm as a creature deck? Bring in Ethereum Abrogator, probably not worth it. Gawu also an aggro. Bring in Lage's Greenblade. I don't think there's relevant uh, enchantments in uh, Pip's deck. Paragon of Purity. Um, if coalescing is an alternative cost, I'm not sure if it's if it counts as an alternative. No, I don't think it's an alternative cost. But actually, I don't, I'm I'm frankly I'm not a judge, and I'm even worse at normal rules than most Magic players. So if coalescing is a valid as an alternative cost, Paragon of Purity might be a bring in. Priestess I think is really good versus these uh, three color control decks, especially ones with a bunch of utility uh, land uh, utility non basics. Uh, Red Tail Fencer, you're not. This is more for burn. Um, Sporeful Protector is really good versus control because of the value you can get you. Tall is also very good versus control. So I think you, some number of Tall, Sporeflow, Priestess, and and maybe Paragon if if coalescing is an alternative cost. Meanwhile, for Pip, probably uh, you probably bring in the Rot, and that's about it. Otherwise, Pip's main deck is already teched out for aggro reasonably well in a, a powerful meta call. Let's get back in. 
Looks like game two has started. Elm is going to fetch up a Heart of the Glade at the end of Pip's uh, turn. Didn't have any two drops, unfortunately, but looks to a uh, lone survivor? No, Theocracy. Which I guess the idea is like you can get the value from this and then play lone survivor later, but I think just taxing Pip's removal here is pro was probably more worth. I don't know. But Pip having, it looks like Pip brought in both the Memento Mori's as additional removal. And also maybe as an anti-spore flow tech, now that I think about it. Um, but yeah, it has a good C, has Heart of Zadina, can go fetch for a forest here. Or actually, yeah, can go fetch for a forest and then has uh, essentially like a good uh, set of uh, interaction spells here. So Elm getting a Seeker of Untouched Beauty off the Theocracy. Uh, next turn, that's going to be a 4-4, four, four, oh, sorry, 3-3 three, three Trampler for one, so it's quite nice. And we'll be getting another creature off Theocracy because Pip doesn't have an answer for it. Also on end, it looks like uh, Pip cycled the Weathered Slums and is now going to just uh, recall Forgotten Aeons. Getting that ramp is entirely fine at this point because has the violent, I guess the thought is has the violent collapse to be able to kill a Seeker and anything else. Lone Survivor does put a bit of a damper on that but Pip will still have enough mana to either Pithwilt or Death and Reverse it. Okay and Elm grabbing a Collar of Hunger off the Theocracy trigger. It's a powerful potter that actually Lone Survivor is actually a one of in this deck which I suppose is um, because you have ways to pot into it like Collar of Hunger and What Lurks Beyond. So I think if you're... see this is the problem. Collar of Hunger is pretty a pretty bad non-bow with Lone Survivor, because now it's just a normal 3-3. Three, three. So I think the call here is either is probably um, Seeker into Theocracy sounds like the best line, though it is it is a little, it is quite overextending, I think is the worry. So I think, so that's probably Elm's worry, but Elm doesn't really have any plays that aren't overextending. Does that make sense? You can pod Collar of Hunger into like a Threshing Sundew maybe, but I, I don't really know how worth that is. Or I guess it gets any two drops. So it can actually, can Collar of Hunger pod its, po, uh, sorry, Collar of Hunger pod the Seeker of Untouched Beauty into a Fog Spewer maybe? I don't know. No, okay, it's going to play out the second Seeker. Now it just comes down to, okay, tapping three, but is it for a Theocracy or for a Collar of Hunger pod? It is for the second Theocracy. So Elm is going to go all in here, but the problem is Pip's Vile, ugh. Fogspure is the best hit off of that, but Pip's Violent Collapse is going to just absolutely destroy Elm, four for one them. They will get two basic lands off the Seeker of Untouched Beauty and still get another creature next turn off the Theocracy, and will also be able to play the Lone Survivor. So it isn't over-over, but it's still going to be very difficult for Elm to come back from that because they're going to be mostly empty-handed at that point. And Pip has... Drawn nothing but gas here. Well, first non-gas draw, but again, has literally four other removal spells to clean up to clean up and one for one whatever Elm puts on the table following that. And yep, here comes the violent collapse. Oh no, heart. What is this? Oh, violent collapse, and then Pithwill to the Theocracy, so that um, Elm doesn't get. Ooh, that's actually a smart play. Yeah, because so that way you're essentially one for oneing Elm and preventing them from digging further. And does it in response to the triggers, yeah. Okay, so Elm gets their uh, basic lands, but now what lurks beyond is useless if you don't have a board. I, and Elm doesn't have any four drops to pod the Lone Survivor into. And Lone Survivor on its own eats the Memento Mori with the quickness. And at that point, Pip leisurely stalls out to wait to draw a win con. And Elm draws another, la mm, draws another land in a deck whose curve tops out at three really not what you want to see. He's going to play the Lone Survivor, has nothing else. Pip just untaps and Memento Mori's... Oh no, Mastery of the Veil. For how much now? Well, it's currently coming down for X equals 6. But Pip can easily just wait a little bit. Oh no, is Pip going to wait? Or is Pip just going to run it out and then do each opponent sacrifices a creature? Maybe, maybe just do the sack mode and then make herself draw a bunch of cards? Oh no, I forgot, had the RFE in her graveyard. Yeah, okay. Tapping out for that makes sense because it blocks a lone survivor. Um, and like, you get to draw into more. You're, and like, at this point, Pip is trying to draw into uh, enough lands to 
uh, mastery of the veil x equals um, nine, which Pip needs uh, essentially eleven mana to do. So two more lands because of heart. Oh, the theocracy does tap down the recall. That's true. But now Elm has left themselves wide open. I guess mm, if they play the spore flow here, hmm. or let me do the math then. So they do. They play the spore flow. Pip. Let's say Memento Mori is it, and then can swing for five, puts uh, Elm down to 13, and then can only Mastery of the Veil for X equals X equals four at that point, so it won't be enough. Oh no, is immediately going to what lurks beyond it? Into what? Threshing Sundew, merging what under it? The Fog Spewer? No, Collar of Hunger. Oh wow, this pod chain is going even further. So it's going to... Pod a uh, Threshing Sundew to get, I don't know, a Fog Spear then, and then just keep... Okay, Priestess of Simplicity. Oh, actually, yeah, Priestesses. Priestess is really good here. Because now with Priestess, um, Pip can only untap one non-basic, and so this suddenly becomes a much more precarious situation. So I think Pip has to un untap a Blackland, and then Memento Mori... Oh, but Memento Mori isn't even guaranteed to kill the Lone Survivor is the issue. Yeah, suddenly a situation where Pip was a like all but guaranteed to win is now extremely problematic. So Pip swings with a recall. Elm is definitely not blocking that. So with four lands, can Death and Reverse the Lone Survivor? But I don't know that's actually a good play. Um okay Pip just passing. I feel like you just want a memento mori here maybe. And now Elm is drawing some gas, another collar of hunger. Which remember can pod themselves into extra copies. So this excess mana that El extra copies of whatever. So this extra mana that Elm has coming in very useful. Okay, gonna play the Collar of Hunger, pod it into a Fog Spewer maybe. The thing is, Pip. The problem is Pip can't actually respond to this until it's on the battlefield, because before Pip could just tap these three and then have an extra mana from the Murky Peat. I guess now it can still sacrifice the Murky Peat to get a basic swamp actually. Uh, which I'm assuming Pip has a snow-covered swamp in her library. And I think the additional problem with this is um, Pip. if Pip wants to untap and kill Elm... Oh, Sack Bull. I was going to say, if Elm got a Fog Spear there, Pip would not be able to play Death in Reverse and therefore wouldn't be able to target or remove the Priestess of Simplicity and then untap all of her lands next turn. Now Pip can do that. And then does Pip have winning lines then? Uh, let's see. So you Death and Reverse, Priestess of Simplicity. You untap everything. Okay, yeah, Death and Reverse on the Priestess of Simplicity. You untap everything, so then... if I guess if Pip wants to draw a land so that she has enough mana to Mastery for uh, a good chunk there. That is a land. So can now Mastery for... So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So can now Mastery for X equals 10, right? So is that just lethal? I think that is just lethal off the mastery. Well, X equals not actually. It doesn't really matter. But yeah, that's that's just game. Who that was so Elm was so close to just at punishing Pip so hard and and taking game two in a real comeback. But uh, Pip played with a cool head, managed to and managed to eke out the victory. And that's the power of mastery of the veil. It doesn't care about your board. It doesn't care about your life total. All it cares about is bonking you in the face, and that's why it's one of the most potent uh, control win cons at the moment. But yeah, good games uh, to Pip, and I think uh, it's really exciting to see in from both of these decks cards from the new set coming into play, specifically Epic Encounter and Fog Spewer, and also Elm's deck being uh, using Tino, Tiny Hero and Totti, who didn't really make a great showing this game, but or this match, but uh, did in a previous one, which you can see on my channel, Infamous Gengar versus Infinity Chef. Overall, like I'm liking the new experimentation and archetypes. I think this is exactly the kind of thing that you want to happen post a set release. And seeing that, ha and seeing that like old decks like um, Pip's Mastery deck are adopting new new cards rather than being pushed out, while new decks are able to be made like Elm's deck. Is all like I think it's perfect for what you want to see from a meta. So yeah, I'm excited to see how this pans out for the rest of GP Paris and beyond. But until then, this is Caillou signing off.